Chances are that if you've already made up your mind to buy, as many would say, the new Galaxy, you're probably asking yourself which variant is best. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. Join us for Samsung Galaxy S7 vs Galaxy S7 Edge, brought to you by dbrand. In the quest for regaining the popularity that it once had, Samsung has spent the last two years trying to reinvent itself. 2015's Galaxy S6 lineup made deciding over them a question of price and looks, and not necessarily a question of improvements. The challenge is far more complicated today with both Galaxy S7s, as these phones are just as similar as they are different. In the similarities department, both phones can be described as gorgeous. Glass on glass match with 7000 series aluminum comes standard, and this time, both have curves of their own. No matter which one you hold, you'll have a hard time wanting to put it down, and uh, you'll have a hard time not wanting to clean it up after that because of the fingerprints. Both of these units run on the same Snapdragon 820 processor and 4 gigs of RAM. Both start at 32 gigs of expandable storage via microSD. Both sport the same camera combo of 12 and 5 megapixels, and both include the same extras like fast and wireless charging. Even IP68 water resistance up to 30 minutes in one meter of water comes standard in either of these. What's really going to cook your decision making is what makes these devices different. Those extra hundred dollars for the Galaxy S7 Edge are now for more than just the rite of passage. The Edge is around 5% taller and wider than the S7, even though the latter is a hair thicker. That extra room helps the Edge sport a larger 5.5-inch Quad HD AMOLED display that's just as gorgeous as on the S7, but with the added curve that creates the surreal bezel-less effect that catches your eye. About the only point in favor of the S7 here is pixel density, since 5.1 inches will give you 577 pixels per inch, compared to 534. That extra room even helps the Edge house a larger 3600 mAh battery, compared to 3000, something that we'll discuss in detail over our full review. If it really came down to hardware to help you decide, it's clear that one has the Edge over the other, but that Edge is not necessarily that large. In the software department, both devices run on the same version of TouchWiz powered by Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. Telling one apart from the other when gliding through menus is nearly impossible as both devices run their respective versions of Android like the flagships that they are. Both include the same game launcher features, both allow the same theming customization, both offer the same always-on mode. It's not until you notice the subtle tab on the right side of the Edge that you notice more value for those $100. Sliding on it reveals the Edge menus that are now more mature than what we've seen in previous generations. You can always switch these off, but I've found myself drifting to these ever so often, as the added launcher that Samsung always intended it to be, that can really become useful when you quickly want to launch an application, take a selfie, or use the optional tools within. The Edge is also open to third-party developers, even though historically that hasn't really amounted to much. Features or gimmicks aside, daily use is really where you question spending extra money for the Edge. Holding it is what I'd like to call an acquired taste as it takes a while for you to learn not to touch the display while you're doing so. The rest of the experience in things like gameplay, phone calls, and data speeds are really the same, and that's a great thing since this extends to the camera. Samsung has endowed both devices with the same 12 and 5 megapixel camera combo, and the results are just delicious. Both devices shine in the dual pixel focusing, and photos on both ends just seem as colorful and saturated, though I'll let the cameras do the talking. Even when recording video, you'll notice great results in stabilization while walking with both devices at the same time. As opposed to the Apple way of doing things, where the phablet includes more features, Samsung has given both new Galaxy flagships the same amount of power. 
Really the only place where I've noticed the difference over the last few days is testing battery life. The Edge is obviously shining with its larger battery pack, but the S7 has also managed to get through the day just as fine. Again, these are features that we will be able to report on more when our full review comes in very soon. And overall, the Samsung way of doing things is what makes this comparison really complicated. Both devices are just as powerful, just as beautiful, and just as feature-packed. Everything is really narrowed down to a meager difference in size, the extra edge features that are nice to have but you don't really need, and the added battery life that you know you do. But tell you what, if it were my hundred dollars, I'd incline in spending the extra money just for the battery performance, but regardless of which Galaxy S7 variant you choose, I'm sure you just will not be disappointed. Looking for a way to add some grip and eliminate those fingerprints from your new Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge? Dbrand has got you covered. Check out dbrand.com slash galaxy or visit the link in the description below to customize yours for under 10 bucks. As our Galaxy S7 coverage continues, make sure you follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. In addition, you can catch our videos on Vessel at Vessel.com slash Pocket Now, and follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, we really appreciate that extra support. I'm Jaime Rivera, we'll be back with more coverage coming very soon.